In a remote section of western Nevada, two men camped in a tent during a sandstorm would likely not have guessed that what they were about to find would change that area and the lives of thousands of people. We'll learn about it coming up on Ghost Towns and More. Our story takes us to the semi-ghost town of Goldfield, Nevada. But Goldfield's story actually begins 30 miles to the north. One day in a saloon in Tonopah, Nevada back in 1902, a Paiute Indian got the attention of mining prospectors when he showed them all a rich ore specimen he had found. A number of prospectors tried to get the Indian to tell them where it was from, but all they could learn from him was that it was from a location about 30 miles to the south. Two young men, Harry Stimler and William Marsh, received financing from interested prospectors to investigate and prospect the new area. On December 4, 1902, Stimler and Marsh went to the area and ended up camping in a sandstorm, but managed to find three places to stake mining claims that looked promising on a site named Columbia Mountain, and the first mining claim they named Sandstorm to commemorate their circumstances when they found it. By the following June, a gold rush was on to the area with many more mining claims made in the same locale. By October of 1903, a group of 36 men gathered at the new site and decided on a town layout with the new name of Goldfield. The face of that landscape was about to change forever. When word got out about Goldfield, the gold seekers came by the thousands. By January of 1905, the population of the new town was 6,000. And by the end of that same year, the population had doubled. It's one of the richest districts in, in the United States and even the world as far as epithermal deposits. Uh, there's been more gold taken out of Goldfield per ton than anywhere else in the world to date. So it's quite a quite a place, quite a town, quite a district. We had uh, you know a total of 24,000 people here at its peak between 1907 and 1908. So it's quite a mining metropolis in its day. Goldfield boasted the finest hotels west of the Mississippi and had all the amenities, fancy restaurants, athletic clubs, churches, theaters, stores, saloons, and every other business imaginable, including four railroads. The town had grown so fast, it became necessary to move the small cemetery further out of town. So in 1908, a group of men referred to as ghouls dug up all the bodies during the nights and relocated them to a new section of cemetery further west of town. One particularly moving story was about a family who was preparing to move out of Goldfield for a destination back east. But on August 30th, 1907, the family's 10-year-old daughter, Joy, passed away. The grief-stricken mother was very distraught about leaving their daughter's remains in a lonely grave where her daughter might be forgotten. So, in the middle of the night, the mother went out and borrowed a child's wagon and went to a local construction site where she found a block of stone. 
She brought the stone home and carefully carved the name Joy into the rock, then went out and placed the stone at the head of her daughter's grave. Contrary to that grieving mother's fears, her daughter was never forgotten. By 1920, the story of Joy was so well known that the townsfolk made an annual tradition of going out to Joy's grave to decorate it. In the 1960s, the Nevada Highway Department made a new headstone for Joy, complete with an engraving of a wagon carrying the famed stone. And in recent years, a charitable cemetery volunteer provided an updated grave marker made from marble salvaged from the old courthouse bearing her full name, Mildred Joy Fleming, including her birth and death dates. Little Joy is well remembered to this day. Goldfield became perhaps the most prominent center of activity in the entire state of Nevada. A record-setting boxing match took place there in 1906 with the all-time record of the fight lasting 42 rounds. It was a $30,000 purse. So uh, the the winner or the the you know the winner of the fight would receive $1,520 gold pieces. Uh, and it was the longest-running prize fight per Queensbury rule. So it. It went on for 42 rounds, and at that time, uh, the fights ran until one of the others couldn't, you know, continue anymore. Despite the booming prosperity of the town, the residents had their share of misfortune. On September 19, 1913, a devastating flash flood came crashing through town, sweeping homes off their foundations and destroying several businesses. Two women were killed when floods washed away their homes. During the peak years, the Goldfield Mines produced more than $80 million of precious ores and was the most important gold-producing district in the state. But as with so many boom and bust mining towns, the abundance of the riches in the mines became increasingly scarce, and by 1918 the town was in a steep rate of decline. Well, the decline of the population began in 1908, and uh, the decline of the rich ore production started in 1910. As if the economic downturn wasn't enough, Goldfield suffered from two devastating fires. The first was on July 6, 1923, destroying 53 square blocks and another fire in 1924 destroyed several blocks of homes and businesses. Goldfield would never be the same again. The sprawling cemetery attests to the glory days of the past, while several vacant buildings and homes remain among many of the now quiet side streets of the once bustling city. Like right now, we've probably got 150, 160 residents that are full-time here. So we're, we're not really a ghost town, we're a semi-ghost. Goldfield is an interesting place to visit with plenty of ideal scenes for photography and opportunities to reminisce about the rise and fall of nostalgic eras of the past.